So first I want to uh, take time to thank TAC. It's really great. They've donated the facilities for our use here, and this is how we're able to keep the rates low for Brocon each year is uh, people like TAC donating the facilities and time. Um, and then, like I said, they've been an important partner uh, with X, within Exceed and TerraGrid and all these other projects with NCSA uh, and a real uh, partner in this community. And this is a beautiful new facility, I must say. Um, I've never been here before, but it's great. And I have uh, also made it my intention here to follow the advice and all the bumper stickers I've always seen all over the country, which is keep Boston weird. So this is my first time, and I'll do my best to keep it weird. So, <laughs> so I'm, you know, I want to take a moment to pause. We've been, what is it? It's been almost exactly a year. So last year at BroCon at MIT, Vern, uh, Seth Hall, uh, Robin, and I signed the paperwork to join the Conservancy. And it's been uh, really exciting. I mean, this is, that was our 20th anniversary, um, and we joined the Conservancy. And it's hugely important to us. I mean, this is all a part of our our goals of becoming a more transparent, more community-oriented project, and, uh, and we're learning a lot. And you can tell how important this is to us and to our community as we've invited Karen, the Executive Director of the Conservancy here, to give the keynote. And so, you know, I want to take a little bit of time to uh, also thank uh, some of the people who've uh, helped us too. So we have this leadership team. So whether you realize it or not, the, con the um, fiscal sponsor and, and home for the Bro Project at the Conservancy, we have a, a leadership team composed of different people throughout the community who help do many things, but you know, one of the big things is they help organize this conference as well, and they help make decisions about the project and uh, the direction that we're going in the future. So I want to thank Seth and Keith and, and Vern and Mikkel. I mean, many of these people are going to be speaking here, so you'll, you'll see them in a bit for their help. But it's it's been uh, an interesting year. I'll say, you know, it, sustainability is a, also a big goal of ours, and it's a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge with a lot of open source projects. Um, though we also uh, had a good year. We got our first award from Mozilla, and they gave us 200 k to do this project to build the Bro Package Manager, which is great because it fits so much in line with our, our goal of becoming more community-oriented, as it will allow everyone here to contribute packages back, plugins, analyzers, and scripts, and to share those out to the community more. And you'll hear more about the first phase of that, which just completed from Seth when he gives his talk a little later today. But I'd also like to encourage anybody, especially you know people at, at companies who are building products or their operations really depend on Bro, to check out the Bro Future Fund. Like I said, sustainability is one of the things that, you know, that's hard for every open source project. And we're trying to get to a model where we don't always depend on the National Science Foundation. I mean, they're there to spur new research, not to sustain software forever, or, or always depending on one particular organization. We're trying to diversify by, um, our funding model and to get support from many different areas from the community. So if you uh, have any interest, please take a look at the Future Fund. I think you'll be hearing a bit more about that over the course of this conference. <clears throat> so one thing, we haven't done this before, but I want to start this new um, tradition here at Brocon each year. I want to start thanking the different uh, people inside of the community who have contributed back to the project. Be beyond the core funded team, you know, there's, there's several of us that are funded off of the NSF grants that that do development, but there's also a lot of people in the community we've become more and more dependent on. And so the first thing I wanted to recognize is uh, is Anthony Kaza and, oh, not, sorry, wrong slide, it showed me slide ahead. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, Ashish Sharma and Keith Lahai. So every release is a huge feat for us. And so NCSA, you know, we're, we're part of the core team with ICSI, and we do a lot of testing internally but even that's still just one network. And so, you know, basically every release, we're relying on people like Keith to test it on Indiana's network, Ashish, LBNL, and many people to, to really work out the kinks, the bugs, the scalability issues, and everything with it. So I wanted to stop and uh, thank both Keith and Ashish uh, for their contributions, and they do this every time, uh, take time out of their work and do this extra. You know, this is, sure, bro is important to their job, but they don't have to do all this work and testing that they do each time for us. So thank you, Ashish and Keith.
Now, shockingly, I, I'm going to mention Anthony Kazaa. <laughs> so another thing that's really important, especially in um, these uh, open source projects, is we, don't, we depend on each other to help with uh, our problems. You know, the community, uh, we can, we're funded to help certain and high education NSF projects and things from the National Science Foundation, but really, uh, we're not scalable to be able to provide user support to everyone. So we depend on people in the community taking leadership roles here and actually helping people on the IRC, on Gitter, and all these other communication channels. And so I just wanted to take a, a moment uh, to recognize Anthony here and Stephen Hossum, the incredibly camera shy. I hope that's actually a picture of Stephen. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll pretend it is. Is it, Seth? All right. It's <laughs> So uh, I also should give a nod out to Mikkel and, and Johanna and Justin, too, because there's lots of people who are active on, on these forums and help each other all the time. And so thank you to um, Stephen and, and Anthony. Yeah. So uh, one more. This has been really exciting for me is the fact that more and more we're getting developers who are contributing back to the community. Uh, and incredibly shy camera, de uh, camera shy developers, it appears. <laughs> this is a theme in our community. Um, but it's, you know, more and more we're having people who are producing and developing code and that's actually getting integrated back into Bro uh, that's outside of the core development team. And I, this is a, a trend that needs to continue uh, for our growth and sustainability. And so I wanted to thank uh, Jan. I'm not sure if Jan made it here. He's in Germany. Uh, but Jan for uh, contributing, you know, all the work on the Intel framework he, for 2.5. You'll see a blog post, a guest blog post about that coming up soon. Uh, his work on the AF Packet plugin. But also Martin, uh, the VNC RFB analyzer that he contributed. And there's many others uh, as well. But I hope to see, you know, this list grow even longer in the future. So, you know, this is just sort of something I did off the cuff this time, but, you know, next year I'd like to do this a little more formally and recognize uh, people. Also, you know, Mozilla has funded us to even give out prizes for uh, bro packages, for the bro package manager project. So, you know, as that project takes off, you'll expect to hear announcements about that. Uh, we're trying to encourage people to contribute back and to use that new system. Uh, and if you have any questions about community or any uh, thoughts or you want to talk to me about things that you, or ideas that you have, please stop by, find me anytime, pull me aside. Uh, if you want to talk about hosting next year, please come by, talk to me. Uh, so thank you, um, Jan and Martin, so, for your help. Okay. Karen's picture was easier to find. <laughs> Um, so I'd, I'd like to rec welcome Karen next. Uh, she's the executive director of the Conservancy, which I've already talked about that uh, we joined, and we're celebrating our one-year or 13-month anniversary, I guess. <laughs> um, she's known as a cyborg lawyer for advocacy and free software, particularly in uh, relationship to uh, software and medical devices. Prior to the Conservancy, she was the executive director of the GNOME Foundation, and before that, uh, the council, general counsel at the Software Freedom Law Center. Is that the Stanford one? No, that's Stanford. Okay, okay. Um, she co-organizes Outreachy, the award-winning uh, outreach program for women, uh, provides pro bono counsel for the uh, Free Software Foundation GNOME, and is the recipient of the O'Reilly Open Source Award and co-host of the Oddcast Free as in Freedom. Clearly a very busy woman. <laughs> Welcome, Karen. <laughs> 